Ready to see what a working stockpile looks like for a family of six? Well, you're in luck because that's what today's video is all about. I'm Kristen here at Joyfully Thriving and I'm so glad you've joined me. I am a frugal grocery shopper. I regularly shop for our family of six on a $475 budget and I share those budget grocery hauls every Thursday on this channel. But I also share tips about building a stockpile on a budget because I firmly believe that having a stockpile is one of the best ways to save your family money. So if this is something you love too and you want to learn more about, be sure that you go ahead and subscribe right now so you don't miss any of those future videos. This stockpile that you're about to see, this stockpile, food storage, prepper pantry, whatever you want to call it, it really is like having my own grocery store in my basement and I am so thankful for this. I really view it as a practical emergency fund for our family and it's my way to kind of fight against inflation as prices keep going up. I am taking care of my family by making sure I have food on my shelves, food on our shelves that we eat and use on a regular basis. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this, so I will attempt to leave links to everything I'm mentioning in the description as well as a stockpiling playlist. I filmed lots of videos about this before, so I will leave those in the description for you to check out as well. If you have any questions, stay tuned to the end because I do have some more tips I want to share with you at the end of the video. I know you're excited about this, so we're going to just dive right in. I'm going to start showing you everything that I have. My goal really is to have a six-month supply of food for our family on our shelves and I'm getting pretty close. We have um, most of the stockpile has been built using my normal $475 monthly budget but recently I did set aside an extra $250 and I went out. I did a $100 stockpiling trip to Sam's to Walmart as well as a $50 trip to Aldi to kind of fill in some gaps. So this tour is showing you everything that I have on the shelves. We're going to go up to the kitchen first and I'm just going to kind of show you those things very quickly, what I use on a daily basis, and then we'll come back down here to the basements. I'll show you everything on the shelves, how much I have, and about how long I think that is going to work. All right, this is a pretty long tour, so get comfy, grab your favorite drink, and come take a look at my food storage with me. Before we look downstairs at the stockpile, I want to show you the other areas upstairs quickly where I store things that I use every day. This is a Lazy Susan right here by my stove, and it starts with all my cooking supplies, my oils, my syrups, my vanilla, honey, vinegar, all those type of things. And then I have all these jars with crackers, so crackers we eat normally, Triscuits, graham crackers, Ritz or Townhouse homemade granola that I make, as well as a larger container with my quick oats and old fashioned oats. I love having these jars. I'll leave a link to these in the descriptions. Keeps everything fresh and the kids can access it easily as can I. I have a jar with pasta and rice, an empty one currently right there, some raisins, a little bit of dried apples left, and then these are kind of snack jars for prepackaged snacks when we have basketball or on the road, as well as kind of the adult snacks with the Lara bars. Drink mixes right here, chai tea, lattes, hot chocolate, and then of course, a large container of popcorn. All right, that's the Lazy Susan. Let's go look at my actual kitchen pantry. Now we have my kitchen pantry, and this is right in my kitchen. It's not huge, but I do try to maximize this space well. Just give you a quick overview and show you everything that's in here. All right, we'll start at the bottom. These are some food safe containers, food grade containers that I got free from a local ice cream shop of Kilwins. In one, I keep my extra oats. I transfer them into gallons of black bags and then put them in here. I can fit three of the large containers of oats in there. Then in this one, I keep chocolate chips. I can fit three large bags from Sam's in one. That's what I try to have on time, on hand at any given time. I keep them a canning jar in the fridge that I'm using. And then the smaller one is other chocolate chips, the regular size bag, assorted baking chips there, as well as some lemonade. Then going up, I have flour on one side as well as sugar. Those are baking goods on the bottom, caramels, coconut, and marshmallows. And I keep one brown sugar and powdered sugar in here to restock my baking containers. All of those things refill. Canned goods shelf, so you can see cream of chicken. They each go about six back. So if you think they're double stacked, I have about 12 cans of each, a dozen cans on the row of pumpkin, peaches, fried beans stacked with an enchilada sauce. I need one of each when I'm making our enchilada casserole. Assorted beans, it's not just black beans on that shelf. I do have garbanzo and chickpeas. A row of green beans and corn, those are the canned vegetables we eat the most, and cream of chicken soup. 
going up i have one box of macaroni and cheese need to restock that behind that is my bag of quinoa and then these are tomatoes right here that i am using as well as tomato sauce and tomato paste when i'm making my homemade sauce i need one can of sauce and paste so that's why they're stacked like that mini jars of cups of applesauce and peaches that i stack in lunches a couple canned cherries and olives and then what i call my baking shelf right here we have some evaporated milk sweetened condensed milk corn syrup on that side these are my box cake mixes i have some more in the back stacked behind that some pudding and tuna i keep condiments back there ranch a little bit of worcestershire and some tuna there's tuna pouches in the back there as well and some dried peanut butter powder and then the top shelf is chips now right next to it that is really my whole pantry so right next to it i have kind of taken over what was kids storage this little shelf and turned it into more pantry storage for me we have the kids things right there and some bins of play-doh and sand i have crackers and some chex mix i do store most of our cereal stacked on top of our extra freezer in the laundry room so it's out of the way and then behind it on this little shelf is where I keep things double stacked. So I have um, four cans, uh, four boxes of homemade cornbread mix. This Fleischmann's is amazing. I love having that. I have graham crackers. My goal was to have four to six of each of these. So you can see I'm doing decent on that. I have four graham crackers, two wheat thins. We don't eat those a ton, but we use them for dips. So I'm fine with that. Four Triscuits right there. Um, as well and then I have a large box of the Ritz right down here so those are my crackers and then going over to the other side is where I have pasta this is double stacked and again I have some egg noodles up there leave that for a minute and I have pasta stacked pardon the falling noodles I have pasta stacked back there as well I have about 30 boxes of pasta so that's great that is about a six month supply with one box a week as well as some tortilla shells the cheap cornbread mix and then in this other Kilwins bin which I had put in front was just again some extra chocolate things bend up and egg noodles so that is my kitchen pantry of what I have stored up here now let's go downstairs and really take a look at my stockpile the part of the tour I know you are all waiting for now here we are in my basement and this is the part of the tour I know you've eagerly been waiting for. I'm going to give you a quick overview of everything here and then I'll walk you through it shelf by shelf. This is an unfinished basement in northern Indiana so thankfully it is stays very cool and I'm able to store a lot down here. All right this is the first wall as soon as you come down. So I have a shelf of some laundry detergent right here. I use about one of those a month, so that's a good six month supply right there. Then I have just some extra liners and a bunch of disinfecting wipes right there that I had gotten cheap a while ago. Then I have really what I call my emergency long term laundry detergent. It's powder, so I don't have to worry about that going bad. And I have three buckets of it right there that again, I don't use on a normal basis, but it is there as an emergency. Um, then I have one jug of vinegar. I have some more tucked away, but one right there as well as some salt. I'm currently using some of these to store applesauce. I pack lunches daily for four kids. So again, this is a stockpile that is being used regularly. Everything you're going to see on these shelves is something we use. So this is where I store applesauce cups. I definitely need to add more to that. We are using those um, going through 20 or more a week. So that goes through quickly right there. Then I have some cocoa here. Cocoa has a long shelf life and I use it for baking. So I have six things of cocoa right there. And then on the bottom are diced peach cups again for school lunches. We'll just keep going um, over here. I'll go back to these wooden shelves. I know I'm gonna get questions about the shelves. My father-in-law built those when he lived here in this house and left them. They're great for storing canning. All right, way up on the top, I have a bin of all my extra lids and rings right there, a couple more disinfecting wipes, and then I have a container of foil pans with lids. I love to use those when I'm giving food to people. It's just super handy. The top couple shelves are all my canning jars, and I had seen this tip for Provident 
prepper a couple years ago and so in all my empty jars I actually have stored water now I didn't treat it you certainly could actually can it um, to truly make it safe and drinkable we have a Berkey water filter so I'm not concerned about that it was just more water to have for in case of emergency or flushing toilets any of those things your canning jars take up the same amount of state space whether they're empty or filled so why not fill them with water so it's really handy to have those so I did all of my larger quart jars are filled with water empty jars that are not being used I just have flipped over right there I did not have a garden this summer due to travel, so these are my last canned goods from the previous year. I have a lot of cowboy candy, so it's like a sugared jalapenos right there. Great as a dip. Our jalapenos did really well the other summer. This is my last little bit of broth I have canned. It is super handy to have it, and it was very easy to pressure can. It was my experiment growing into pressure canning, but I have also discovered we don't necessarily use a lot of broth. so. That is what I have on hand right now. And then my last home can shelf right here. I have a little bit of just regular jalapenos, pickles, some sweet cherries. I had bought those at the store and canned those. And then salsa. That is my go-to thing to can. I love having homemade salsa. It's so good. And I use it a lot. All right, so now let's go back to and continue working our way down. I've got some tea in there. I don't drink a lot of it, but that I actually don't drink any tea, but that's more for company. I have some pistachios. I buy the large bag at Sam's and then just put them in canning jars. Enchilada sauce, some canned chili for making dips. Bouillon cubes, it's a quick way to make broth when you need it. Some onion soup mix and then true lime. I love to add that in my water. Just flavors it up, very simple to do that. The next chef going down is condiments. So I have six jars of ketchup. That's really a year's worth supply. Here, this got scooched over that my son came down for syrup this morning. So I try to keep four things of syrup on that shelf at all, the all times. I need to obviously I have two there, so I need to fill it in with two more. That is about a six month supply for us of syrup. Yes, I know maple syrup is better, but my kids just prefer the cheap stuff. So that's the syrup I buy. I have four rows of the canning spray for when baking and greasing pans. That's a year's supply there. And then these are just some extra condiments. So I have three mayos, one ranch back there, and it looks like a barbecue sauce that I use. Going on down next is where I have my oils. So I have two canola oils and two olive oils. I know there are a lot of mixed opinions lately on vegetable oils and canola oil, but I use it for popping popcorn and occasionally baking. So yes, I do have that on hand as well as olive oil then when I'm cooking or sauteing. And then if you remember when my previous tour, I was running really low on apple juice and so I've made it a point to restock. We go through three of these in a month is what I figured out. It takes us just longer than a week. My kids just drink a little bit of apple juice in the mornings for breakfast. So now I really do have a six month supply of juice, which makes me very happy. I have a couple extra jars in front just so you can see them. I know not to store things on concrete. I will probably get comments about that, but I just wanted you to see the apple juice I have. So a full shelf right there is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 jars plus the eight up there. So I'm excited to have my juice all stocked up for a while. As we use it, I will just keep watching for stales and restocking that there. And then going back over to the shelf below the canned goods, I have applesauce. I have more applesauce around the corner, which you will see in a minute, but I have 10 jars here. I have discovered the best place is definitely buying that at Sam's Club. Just basic, plain applesauce, um, no sugar added. We keep that on hand. Again, we go through about three or four of those a month. So again, I have a good supply going there. Next shelf is my peanut butter. I have lots of peanut butter because they have been running amazing sales on peanut butter. These actually are three back in a row. So I have three, six, nine, 12, um, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 jars of peanut butter right there. We use it for school lunches. I bake homemade Buckeye candy, which is like peanut butter balls. And also it's a great thing to have to give away to food pantries when you need to, or when you want to. Um, it's a great source of protein. So I always keep peanut butter on the shelves right there. That's a great supply. That is a good six month to a year supply of peanut butter there, even baking probably a year's supply with just lunches, but love having that there. 
I have three jars of jam currently. I need to restock some more. I used to can my own, haven't canned it in a couple years. So I do try to just buy the um, jam that is fruit and sugar when I am doing that. So I need to keep stocking up. I'd like to have at least six jars there. So I need to have a little bit. And then refried beans. We use this for homemade enchilada casserole that I make. Um, yes, I know I can make my own, but this is quick and convenient. So I like to have those. I currently only have um, nine cans here. I'd like to fill that in to be a full dozen down here as well as what's upstairs on my kitchen shelf. And then the bottom row of the shelf here is really my um, start of my tomato sauces and canned tomatoes and things right here. I have a bunch of large cans. These are two, four back when you see these. So four, six, eight, twelve of the large cans. I have only one can of the ready-made marinara. I make my own a very simple recipe. I'll leave the link to that in the description. It's very good. Freezes well, um, or I just make it fresh when we need it. And then I have a couple jars of Parmesan cheese back here. I have one large and I think two small. I would like to have a little bit more of that and then some diced tomatoes. I have more around the corner, which I will go ahead and move to show you that. But again, here was just that overview again going up. It's as compact as I can make it, just trying to keep things organized so that when I come down here and need to grab something or send the kids down to grab something, they can easily find it. All right, so now that's just duck around the corner and I'll show you the rest of my stockpile and what's over there. Okay, like I said, this is an unfinished basement. You can kind of see those wooden shelves right here behind. So I really just moved around the corner, but I have to finagle around things here, just around water heaters and things. But I'll try to show you all of these things on these shelves. Again, we bought these at Menards. You can, I found them at various places. They actually do sell them on Amazon. They are muscle rack shelves. I will leave a link to these as well in the description so you can check them out as well as some other things that I use. All right, so the very top shelf up here is more canning jars in that box. That smaller bin up there, as you can see, is actually some bags of plastic bags, of gallon size bags and different things, just trying to figure out how to keep them organized. This is not totally perfect, but this is real life and what works for us and how I'm storing things right now. Hopefully it gives you some ideas. This is actually storage. I need to get that moved off an old CD player. My husband's there and speakers, one sandwich bag, I have um, a little bit of foil right there in parchment paper that I bought from Sam's. Then this truly is what I would call our emergency bin. So it's extra lighters. It is um, some canning jar lids. It's a pump for some water, matches, just truly emergency things there that when I was starting prepping, some extra flashlights, um, just all sorts of things like that. So that's what's in there. Then I have a box of plastic forks and spoons, very handy to have. These again are some more canning jars right there of different sizes that aren't being used. It is handy to have some of those boxes just to stack them up. I don't have many cardboard things down here because it is a basement and we are in Indiana. So yes, we can have mice, but I don't seem to have that problem. So I don't stress about it too much. Okay, this shelf is my pumpkin. We go through a lot of pumpkin and this is very low. Pumpkin currently is a little high. This is before Thanksgiving when I'm filming it. Typically, I try to stock up after Thanksgiving when the pumpkin goes on clearance. I'd like to have two to three dozen cans to last us all year, so I definitely need to restock that section here. These cans go back about six again in each row, and then they're double stacked. I have peaches. That is really the canned fruit my kids eat besides applesauce. Other than that, we do frozen and fresh, so that is what I stock here. Those are all canned peaches in fruit juice. I have a little bit of tomato sauce and tomato paste. I've been working my way through that, and then I will restock that as well. I was thankful to find canned tomatoes for 50 cents a can at Kroger recently, so I stocked up there and have those. And then these are um, Capri Suns. I was trying to figure out how best to store them. I put this in the plastic bin. My kids take these on Fridays as a special treat in their school lunch. I will probably not store it like that again. It does seem to take up more space. I'll probably leave them in boxes when I buy more but that's what it is for now. And then this bottom shelf is paper plates, plastic cups, and my canning things. I have a water bath back there as well as a pressure canner. And then there is another jug of vinegar. 
So that's just those little supplies. All right, I'm gonna duck around the water heater here and we'll go through the other side. Okay, so now I'm around the water heater and I'll just kinda scan up these shelves on this side and then we'll talk through everything here. Again, this is an unfinished basement, like I said. So let's just talk through it. We'll go back down to the bottom and start there. Okay, so I have two of these large Sterilite bins. These are the 56 quart. One stores all my cookie cutters and baking things in there. And then one is just miscellaneous um, paper products. So it's bowls, little plates, cups, more silverware. It's just nice to have these things binned up, keeping them organized. And again, two fit on these shelves very well. My next shelf is applesauce like I said this is our main canned good you can see some of my buckets and water behind we'll talk about that in a minute so applesauce again great thing to have shelf stable for a long time a little bit of honey again food storage wise and then just a couple applesauce pouches that I use when we're traveling if I see a good deal I stock up on those and put them there my next shelf and I'm excited to have this really full again I scored with 50 cent canned goods at Kroger so I really stocked up canned corn and green beans are the ones we eat the most especially canned green beans I love Love having this because it's shelf stable and as you can see the um, expiration date is three years out from when I am filming this so having this many canned goods that are shelf stable is just such a good feeling for us so I have two dozen cans of corn these are six back again and double stacked so three dozen cans of green beans I have a row, so a dozen garbanzo beans with this one in the middle here is assorted. I think it's a couple of garbanzo and then it has just a mixture in there. So another dozen assorted beans, but I have a dozen pinto and a dozen black beans with a couple more stacked up there. I have a row of canned soups and these are kind of the canned chicken noodle just if someone's sick. And then I have only um, two rows double stacked of cream of chicken soup. I will stock up on that more. Yes, I know I can make my own, but we make a poppy seed chicken recipe that my family loves as well as cheesy potato casserole and I need those things for both of those. So I do need to add more of that but I like having that on hand in my shelf. Again, if your family doesn't use cream of chicken soup, please don't store it, but we do, and that's what works for us. And then if you go up, you see some of my canned meats. I don't have a ton, but I do have some canned chicken that I have bought at Sam's. I am super impressed by this canned chicken, and I'm going to start slowly adding to it um, a couple times a year, I think. So I have, I think, six of these six packs right there, as well as tuna. I have a full 12 pack back there, plus those cans in front. I have a lot of meat in my freezer, and so that is obviously where I you'd normally use my meat, but it is nice to have some shelf stable meat as well. I have some black olives, my family loves those, and those actually have like a four to five year shelf life when you buy them. Well, three to five, depending on when you buy them, but that's amazing to have. Here's some extra hot chocolate. I just repurposed a large animal container to get rid of the cardboard and keep those safe. So that's more hot chocolate to restock upstairs. Some chai tea and then some wines down here in the basement where it's cool. And then on the top is just a little tiny bit of long-term food storage. So these are canned goods that last um, in the 20 to 30 year range as well as our router as you can see up there um, but these canned goods are things that just if I've seen a really good deal on Amazon I try to stock up on them and like by a good deal I'm saying all of these cans were less than ten dollars when I bought them and so I just have about a dozen cans of those up there and these are really are thing those are the only things on the shelf that I do not touch on a regular basis so that is up there, long-term food storage. I will actually leave a link in the description to some of my favorite um, deals on Amazon for long-term food storage, all things prepper pantry, um, any of those things, some books and resources I use, as well as that is where I update those deals on those canned goods. So if you are interested in getting some long-term food storage, the Augustin Farms brand is a great one on Amazon to find. And again, I will leave links to that board on Amazon in the description. All right, so those are my shelves here. Again, those two shelves, just going back down. Now let's talk the last thing that I have down here, my buckets and how and what I store in those. 
All right, and then this is really the last thing I have to show you my stockpile before we chat a little bit more, but I do have some of these food storage bins. Now, this has been a more recent addition in the last couple of years, really since COVID, because I bake a lot and, you know, you can do a lot with flour and sugar. So I wanted to make sure when the shelves were empty and it was hard to find, I've been breaking bread since long before that for our family. So I wanted to make sure I have things on hand. So I have multiple bins. I have a couple with the twist off lids of sugar. So I move it from um, a sealed bin like with a lid like this. Then I move it into here and then I move it upstairs when I need it. So one of these bins holds about eight bags of sugar. The you use the four pounds. So that's great to know. And I have um, about three of those bins of sugar. And then I have flour. And again, I, what I do is I just put tape on them, uh, painter's tape here, and I just kind of keep tally of what I have. I like these bins that I actually bought at Menards because the lids come off super easily, but they're still super tight. So I have, I can fit 20 pounds of flour in a bag. It also holds a 25 pound bag, but I prefer buying it in the 10 pound or smaller just because I think it's a lot easier to deal with. Now, if you were keeping, I rotate through this very quickly. So I don't do anything with it other than put it in here. However, if you are wanting to store it for long term, you certainly can and should freeze your flour for a day or two before letting it come back to room temperature to deal with any pests or anything. I know a lot of people recommend that. I have never had an issue with any of my flour going bad or again, sugar obviously lasts. So that seals down. And then again, I have about six, I think, of those of flour. So I have probably a year's worth of sugar and six months worth of flour. And then the one other bin, and this really is kind of pepper, this is freeze dried food. Again, I don't do a lot of it, like I said, long-term food storage, but going in here, I wanna share this tip because this is me being frugal blogger plus slash prepper. So one of the ways this bin is all filled with these freeze dried meals, and it's not a lot, but you just add water, and these are all things that last for 30 years, all of these pouches. now. I don't have a ton of these, but did you know that you can get these for free at Dick's Sporting Goods? And here's how I do it. I wear my Fitbit and I am signed up for the Dick's Reward Program. About every three months, I get a free $10 reward and these are still $9.95 at Dick's. They have been for the past couple years. So every time I get a reward or of myself or my husband's, I just go and pick up one of these, totally free, no tax, and I've just been slowly adding to our long-term food storage like this. And like I said, you can see the date here, March 2053. It really is totally um, long-term food storage. So sharing that with all of those of you who want to do something like that, it's a really easy way. I have totally filled this bin slowly over the course of a year or two, just with a bunch of different freeze-dried meals. So there's a budget long-term food storage hack for you. All right, I think that's pretty much everything, but let's wrap back around, let's flip around now and chat about um, some last stockpiling things and some more tips for you. I hope that was helpful getting to see everything that I have on our stockpile. All right, let's talk about a couple things that I didn't get to show you or talk to you about water. First of all, water is so important to stockpile and it really is something everyone should have. Um, the FEMA emergency recommendations, they recommend one gallon of water per person per day with a minimum three days stockpiled. Of course, that's really your bare minimum. So for our family, there'll be six gallons a day. And then you can store it in a variety of ways. We do have it stored in a lot of different ways. I have that water in canning jars up there. Every time I actually finish an apple juice container from all that apple juice, I clean it out really well and I store it with water and I put it under our bathroom sinks. We are on a well, so when we lose power, we lose electricity. So it's one of those things I know that I have to be prepared to deal with that on an occasional basis anyways. So I always stored those jugs. I have at least two gallons of water under every sink in our house just to have some water for flushing toilets. And then I actually like to buy the um, 40 pack bottles of water, individual water bottles from Sam's because if you buy a 40 pack, that's actually five gallons of water and it stacks really nicely and you can easily rotate it just to have that. Of course, we also have some large five gallon things of water. I do have a Berkey water filter. I have water stored in a lot of ways because I do know it's important. So if you haven't started storing water, go ahead and make sure you're doing that at minimum, at least three days water supply for your family. 
Now, I do have some stockpiling baby steps. I filmed a video on that before um, because I know it can seem overwhelming. My biggest tip is you don't do this all at once. Slow and steady is the way to do it. Take your time. Every time you see a good sale or you're shopping, buy one of those things you use regularly. Buy one for now and two for later. And you will slowly start seeing that impact on your shelves. You will start accumulating that stockpile. This stockpile was really built over the course of a couple years and it is constantly being used. I don't have to worry too much about dates because I am using everything on the shelves. I'm constantly running down here and grabbing some things, moving them up to the kitchen and just going through everything that I have. If you stockpile what your family uses, you won't have to worry about those expiration dates. And I know you might feel like, oh my goodness, there's no way I can do this. I have shared um, how you can actually stockpile on only $5 a week. If that's as little as you have, something is always better than nothing. A stockpile really is a great blessing to have for your family. So I will leave a link to that stockpiling playlist as well as a lot of those things I mentioned about our shelves. I have a whole kind of stockpiling um, recommended resources on Amazon. I'll leave that below as well but I really do hope this was helpful to you. I hope it was encouraging just to think, yeah, this is what a normal family is doing and I can do this too. I would love to cheer you along on that journey. And like I said, I share videos here every week with those frugal grocery hauls and more tips about building a stockpile and a budget. So I hope you'll join me here. If you do have any questions that I did not answer or things you'd like to see more in future videos, be sure to leave those in the comments below and I will do my best to respond to all of those and help um, clarify anything you have questions on because I'm sure I'm forgetting something. So thanks so much for joining me in this video. It was great to share this tour with you and I will see you in the next video.